Hello, I am Sir Scout King and welcome to this tutorial about trigger sequences. So, uh, first off, let's talk about what can be triggered in a sequencer. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff. Anything that is in special effect, pyrotechnic, electricity, water, fireworks, of course, all of these things can be triggered. Um, the first thing that people would think about is the fireworks, but somehow I find that the most fun to do is sequenced fountains, sort of like this. This thing right there, uh, that's a fountain that I made. It's on the workshop, by the way. It's meant for like a lake or something, and surprisingly that thing is more popular on the workshop that I am currently on Twitch. It has more subscribed than I have follows. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so yeah, these, of course, uh, very widely used would be animatronics. Any animatronics that you see in there can be triggered on a sequencer or just, just some trigger. Uh, very useful would be doors for your track rights. No, they open so you you can make them on command on trigger so that they open just as the roller coaster or the track ride passes through them. That kind of thing. Um, and another big thing would be lights. Any light can be activated, deactivated on trigger. Those that can, uh, where you can select the color, can also, you can change the color on trigger. Um, there is one thing that you need to keep in mind. Water effect at night is not lit by light. As you can see, like it's lighting the platform, but not the water itself. That's because of the limitations of the game. A special effect cannot affect another special effect. It's, you know, a sad reality. It's just the way it was coded. They could probably do it, but it would take probably months or years for not much, really, when you think about it. So, uh, anything that's a light will sadly be exclusive, but yeah. Um, in this exact example, I want to show light more than anything else because of the change of color. So, I'm going to be working with a light to show you what you can do with it. Um, so, the next big thing would be sequencers. So, display sequencers right here. It's not your only way to trigger something, but uh, it's the most uh, useful one, so that's what I'm gonna demonstrate in this. So, first of the first thing you need to know, well, okay, let's, uh, let's make a trigger sequence. Right? Um, so, that's how you do it. You First, you add a group. And then in your group, you connect objects. So let's connect this. First thing that happens, as soon as it is connected, the light is turned off. That's kind of a big deal. Uh, if you want the light to be turned on, well, uh, let's see what are our options. So you have a play on trigger. Activate and deactivate. Basically, play on trigger, what's gonna do is it's gonna activate for a certain amount of time and then it's gonna deactivate itself. So if I was to say activate, then it's just gonna activate and it's gonna stay on forever, like this. And then it's just on forever. Uh, if I was to say deactivate, well, what? And yeah, if you go back to uh, play on trigger, same thing, it activates for a certain amount of time and then turns off. Um, that's your default, by the way. It's simply because that's what you're mostly going to use. 
let's say that you have a ride, uh, like a roller coaster, and you want it to pass, and oh, there's fire coming out of this area. Well, you want your fire to play for maybe three seconds, and then the fire you want it to turn off because your roller coaster is gone from that area. You don't want the fire to be already on for the next time the ride goes through that area, right? So that's why that's your default one. It's just the most used. That's all. Um, but yeah. If um, there's also the change color, but if you want to change color, um, you know, the light is technically off. So the light looks on right now. That's because that's just um, what the light looks like. Right? That, that's how it looks like. Even if it's off, it looks on. It just doesn't have any glow. What you turn on and off is the glow. So if you want to change the color, um, what I suggest is actually have a activate on trigger on first. And then you can connect it again. Same light. This time here you can change the color. So for colors, you have change color, restore. Uh, and restore color and then swap color your swap color is basically just like play on trigger so for example if I have swap color to red well let's let's make it here let's make it really red okay so let's say that I change the color to red whoa and then it goes back to white and uh, I still have this here which is activate on trigger otherwise it would still be off even if like well I turned it on and then you know I do this thing where I change the color and oh it stays on well that's kind of a bug uh, it's gonna stay on until you reload the game as soon as something is connected to a trigger it is by default off so you do need to have this activation that's kind of important um, so yeah, swap color to change color just on trigger. You can also just change color manually, you know, kind of like this. And then uh, it's going to stay this color forever until I say to restore color. Or if I wanted to change color again, of course. So... That's your the your basic functionalities here. Um, oh, there's one more that we didn't do, the repeat. So this one, I'm just going to delete this. Uh, hello. Okay, this is bugged out. I'm not sure why. That was weird. Okay. Uh, yeah, sometimes there's visual bugs, actually. That's another thing that I'm going to talk to you about in a moment. So I'm going to reconnect it. All right. Um, so the repeat, that's another thing. It's essentially play, but it toggles. So essentially, this is useful for flashing. Any flashing light. Uh, keep in mind that the default uh, for after this is to turn it off. Sort of like play on trigger, it will turn it off afterward. So your light will turn off. If you want it to stay on afterward, you'll need to add another activate on trigger. So those are all your uh, choices. There's uh, different things for animatronics, but it's basically the same thing it's you most you're mostly not gonna be able to change the color but yeah it's all the same um, so those are your basic functionalities but that's not a sequence right so here let's do a an actual sequence we're gonna have um, the light turn on for let's say well, let's say let's say we want it to be turned on for two seconds here. Uh, we want to do something else afterward. Uh, you can, by the way, you can create a second display group for that. 
this is going to play for two seconds. So this display group is going to start after two seconds. Then you can reconnect the same object or different object or something like that. And then here, let's say that uh, we want it to... Um, here, let, let's say that we want it to flash. Uh, let, let's really make it flash for like another two seconds. So now if I play this, it's going to be playing for two seconds. And why isn't it? working. Did I mess it up? Play on trigger for two seconds. Two seconds. Beat. Um, maybe... Okay, I'm just gonna do this. Maybe I bugged it out. Sometimes I do that. Uh, no, it looks fine. Oh, that's why. Okay, that's another... That's another... Thing. Um, that's something. It's because it's a different display group. I'm going to explain that in a moment. So for now, I'm just going to do this instead. I'm going to give you a same thing. Because you can do it on the same group, by the way. Uh, that's really... The, the groups is really just for you to organize yourself to make it simpler. Alright. Now it should be working. Point one. For two seconds. Please be working. I'm trying to show an example here. Why isn't it working? I don't get it. Let's try something. 2.1. Ah. That's what I thought. Okay. So basically the... F the This is finicky. That's what it means. The... the Toggle is finicky and the first one was making the second one bug out because it was in the wrong state at the time. I think it has to be turned off first or something like that. I, To be honest, I never actually tried repeat on Toggle before this video, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, basically, you know, a sequence is that, is you make thing happens once, then you add a delay, you make something happen afterward, something like that. And it sort of take a bit of time to do, but there's really nothing more to it. You just put thing one after another and you make a sequence. So, how do you activate this? You know, other than pressing that button there, right? Which takes a while. Uh, yeah, you know, you would need to manually select it and everything. Well, you can have it play automatically. Uh, oh, this would be only if it's being triggered by something else or if you manually press the play button. Um, loop and on trigger. Lo that means it's gonna play every once in a while. In this case, hourly. There you go, it just played once. Uh, by the way, that time is here. That's your in-game time. Um, you can also restrict activation times. So these are, you know, uh, for example, start at night and stop in the morning. So this would mean it would play every hour at night only. And if you have... Like, or at specific time is the same thing. Uh, you can set it to specific times. Uh, but yeah, loop and on trigger would mean it will play every hour and if triggered. It's the combination of both. Um, but yeah, uh, so night time only. That's, you know, you know, a good thing for fireworks, right? Uh, how do you set night time? Right now, I'm uh, I set the lightning force, the lighting force to nighttime. It doesn't count as these. Like if I have my cursor here, I see that it's actually in the AM. If I unlock the lighting, it is daytime. So how you set 
uh, day and night cycle, it's in here. Park overview. And then you have ticket price. Ticket price controls everything for your park entrance. You have your opening and closing time. These are only visual. The guests, it doesn't affect the guests, it doesn't affect the staff, it doesn't affect your money, it's only visual. But that allows you to have, you know, visually a day and night cycle, so you could have fireworks that play once every night. For example, if, uh, if, I, say, if I set at uh, specific times, then, oh, fireworks are going to play, you know. Um, by the way, never put any price here. It's broken in this game. You can have a maximum guest, guest capacity that's useful for performance or if your paths are kind of thin and you don't have enough room for people in your park, well, you can limit the amount of guests. Just a, you know, side note here. Um, oh, by the way, special effect here will only tell you how much it costs. It's not really useful. Uh, this is, you know, nighttime. How to add nighttime. Uh, by default, uh, the nighttime doesn't exist in the game, by the way. You need to set it where I just showed you. Uh, one more type of activation would be continuous activation. Here, let's unrestrict it. So continuous activation means it's always gonna activate. Just like that. However, as you can see, it is non-stop flashing right now. That's because of the continuous activation. Let me show you what it does. So, uh, the activation is two seconds. The, the sequence is two seconds now. Um, can you... Okay. So the activation is two sequ sequen bleh. The sequence is two second. I can talk. I have the ability. Uh, what it does is after two seconds, well, I guess two second and ten, it already loops back. This plays for two second, then so it goes back into this and then back into this, back into this. So basically, it skips this. What you want to do. If you want to have this play on a loop without, you know, skipping part of it, you want to add a pause. Something that has nothing that activates after your full sequence is complete. So this, for example, at 2 seconds and 10, that's my last uh, trigger, right? That's my last trigger. It plays for 2 seconds. So at 4.10 then my sequence is actually finished so my pause here will tell my sequencer okay the sequence is done now you can loop so now if I do this okay it's active flashing uh, looks like the flashing is actually making everything bug again. So I'm just going to add another point 10 here. That flashing, man. That flashing is unreliable. Uh, un unre unre it's annoying. Let's see if it's worked this time. There you go. See? Okay, so whenever you use flashing, you need to have a little bit of wiggle room. But as you can tell, it is now working correctly. I'm just going to stop this because it's kind of really annoying. Thank you. Um, so yeah, continuous activation. Don't forget to add your pause at the end. It's kind of necessary. Uh, if I put it back to daytime... I can show you this as an example again. Uh, this is on continuous activation. I'm just gonna edit it. Because this is part of the building. There we go. So if, uh, see this has been playing in loop this whole time and it's always playing in a loop. Very pretty, I like it. I still like it. It's been 
I don't even remember when I did this, and I'm like, oh man, this is pretty good, you know? Um, so yeah, it did the trigger sequence. So, see, the, na the last one is nothing. That's my pause right there. After exactly 40 seconds, the whole thing is complete. Um, I have... Uh, what I did here, I have everything in uh, groups there. Like so, this would be one of the sequence. This here, let's let's stop the sequence. I'm gonna show you what I did there. Okay, so this would be one of the sequence. They're just the small fun things. This is the corners. Oh, by the way, the number here was like the duration. The ball spiral. So, um, this lasts three seconds. So it's pretty simple. You, I, you, 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 you know, you link it. You say play for three seconds, which is the default basic stuff. Same thing here. Play for three seconds. Now this is more complex. They all play for one second. It's the same, by the way, this is the same as this. It's the same element. It's just reconnected again. Um, so yeah, when you want things to play for one second, that is kind of a pain to do because it's not your default time. Um, that's something that I want to talk to you about, the bugs. So, there's a thing here in this game. Uh, it's kind of annoying, but yeah. Let's use this. Uh, that's too small to really see. This is uh, intermittent. This, how big? Oh, okay, that's perfect. Let's say I have four of these. Let's... Put one of these. Make trigger sequence. Um, I wanna. I want all four to be connected, and I want them to play for one second, right? So if I click here, all of them are triggered for three seconds by default. I want them to play for one second. I click here, press one, enter. Click the next one. If I don't press enter right now I am in selection for the text box here's where it can bug out if I click on the next one here it's gonna confirm the number but the UI is gonna bug and now it says oh this one is triggered for one second but really it's the UI bugging out it's the old UI appearing here so it's basically this that appears when I click here. And now it's stuck like this, which means the actual uh, time that this plays, I no longer can access it. So if I show you what it does when I'm done, see this one is stuck on three seconds now. The other ones are, are on one second. So if that occurs to you, just press done, it's it again now you'll be able to access it. It's so annoying. It's a small detail that you need to remember. Make sure you click out of this or press enter before, you know, if you click out like this, it's fine, before you click on a different one. Just a small thing. So the UI in here can bug out. Uh, whenever you have that, just press done, it's it. So that's sad part of this, yeah. And another thing is, yes, there's a duplicate button. No, it's not useful. It's a terrible button. It Making a sequence takes time. There's no way around it. It's just, it's yeah, it takes time. That's all there is to it. I can delete this. I no longer need you. Um, so, yeah. Um, other se things that you can sequence would be roller coasters. So for roller coasters and track ride, it's the same thing. You build your thing, 
and then you go here in triggers you can make a trigger sequence and then it's basically the same thing except instead of having a time before it activates you have a location before it activates so let's say I want my roller coaster to reach here connect this to object there you go what's useful about roller coasters is that when you create a new group it's a new location it's easier to manipulate but it's really the same thing you're doing the exact same thing um, your options I believe are a bit more limited um, but yeah uh, actually no I think you have the same things it's just at this point you know it's a firework it's not a light I think if, even if you put a light in there you can do the same thing you can have it turn on and off and blah 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 so yeah Here, let's just finish this Okay, and then if I test the ride, there you go. See, so on a roller coaster, it's much easier like this. Um, you could also do something like this. Uh, I'm gonna delete everything here. Can I just reset? Is there a way to just reset the trigger? I think there is, right? Uh, maybe not on this. I've seen somewhere where you could uh, just delete everything all at once. Um, oh yeah, reset, reset event delays. That, that's what I was forgetting. So you could do something like this. Uh, have a single point and then connect multiple things. And then you you could play them on a, a delay. So this would be my first one. This would be one second later. Two second later. Why not have this also two second later and this one second later? By the way, you have a sort all button. It will sort your things with um, according to your time delays. And that sort is done automatically if you ever leave and edit again. So just just a reminder, it will be sorted out automatically. It's really just to organize your things. Um, what can help you out is to rename your thing. So this would be like middle, one, one, two, two. You know, just so you can s clearly see what is what. Uh, that's what I did with my fountain over here. If I exit the building. Let's delete the platform so I can click on stuff. So if I click here, you see outer 9, inner 8, ring, things like that. So I renamed everything. And you can rename them from the sequencer itself. And that's what I just did here with the ride while exiting the tri the trigger sequence. As you can see, it is now renamed. And uh, it's not necessary, but it, you know, it makes things easy to understand. Uh, so yeah, this time I did the trigger sequence uh, differently. I have only one trigger and then I do like a whole thing as just like the Tri just like using a sequencer, right? So let's have a look. See? So you can do things like that on a ride just as well. Um, I play with that personally with... Uh, actually, it would be easier to access it from here. Do, do, do this one. It's kind of big. Um, so, here, I'm just going to place it here. But to tell you an idea, this is supposed to be in water. And what I did with this is, after the ride goes all the way to the back, and then it goes forward, there's a fake splash happening. 
using a ton of splash effect that is like hidden inside the, the these piece right there there's like there's a there's a lot of water effect in there hidden um, and what I did I did the same thing on a single trigger which is very far back so this way the ride can only hit the trigger on the last pass and then on the way back with a delay everything appears in the right order so you can do that just add your delays and your effect will appear as if it was you know all triggered one by one or something um, so that's on a track so it's the same thing for track rides uh, if you want to add trigger on these things uh, the trigger to sequence see I have a trigger right there it's on the track same principle uh, by the way this is the shooting right the quick draw things it's uh, if you go here and track right interactive shooting right that's a free DLC in the game um, and you can uh, you can have targets and these targets, actually, that's another thing that I wanted to talk about. It's another things that you can trigger with this. So, they are all in props here. Targets. So, all your targets are here. And uh, what you do is you place them sort of like this. And then you can have, like, one target here. You say, you say okay, so just stay active until you someone shooting this. And then make shooting sequence add group same thing just like a sequencer and then you would say uh, all right I want you to activate on trigger so then this is gonna by default say all right I am now deactivated and if I was to shoot this from one of these interactive shooting stuff this one would go up now there is a bunch of stuff you can do with uh, with these, you know, targets. You can use them to activate anything, just like a sequencer or just like a sequence on a ride on a uh, one of these uh, trigger sequence. Uh, it's all, you know, everything can be activated with anything basically. Um, and so. One thing that I heard about was that, oh, you can make logic gate. So there is or and there's N, but it's a fake N. Let me show you what it does. So I'm going to put it in testing, test shooting ride. So my or, that's pretty simple. Click one this race click one this race and you can also click both this race so this is or which is logical now and that means you need both side to activate the top right um and now you're probably wondering okay but how is it fake you know you need both sides it's pretty cool blah 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 uh, very simple. This, uh, it's impossible to do. To have, like, say, this only turns on when this and this has been shot. Instead, you have a second set. So when you f first shoot one, this one raises up. So when you're shooting, you're not actually shooting this. You're shooting this. And when this or this is shut then this rises so essentially this end is just or with an extra step so this is the same thing this is a when this is shut this raises up if this is shut this also raises up it's a very very simple logic so it's not the truth is logic gate does not exist in this game you only have or that's it everything else is fake um, 
one last thing that I can show you is sequencer on a sequencer. So this is a ride that I have in one of my park. The sequencers in my in this ride normally are hidden in this rock, so you don't see it. Uh, oh, also this is a sequencer on a small ride. That's also another thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, so basically, I have. Uh, I'm gonna put it at night here to show you properly uh, and on pause um, so basically I have uh, the ride rises up touches this and then I have a special effect Wow! Uh, so I have this lighting round which is uh, you know just lighting playing in a circle it's eight special effects hidden inside this little thing right there um, I have uh, this the sparks those are three sparks to appear sort of like random but really there's just up left and right uh, if I show you the sequence here it's you know up left right up left right that's it that, that's all there is to it um, and then in the main sequence, I have both sequencer, the lighting, and the spark, plus an additional electric rod here, the, which is uh, this thing. There's uh, an electric rod inside here. So in total, when you play all three together, you have this. Pretty cool, right? Um, and then what I did was I just used that and duplicated the same thing. You can duplicate from here to have a delay because I realized that the animation uh, that I needed it for uh, around 16 seconds. So every one of these groups actually play for 4 seconds and it's just the same thing duplicated. Um, and then in the ride itself, I have the sequence. So rides have, uh, the small rides, they have a ride sequence. Uh, I suggest you experiment with those. There's all sorts of, um, there's all sorts of animations. Uh, there's the ride sequence and then there's the trigger sequence, by the way. Um, and yeah, so like for example, this will uh, first make uh, a bunch of loop on the ground, then it goes up, it, then it, it goes up vertically, it does a bunch of loop there, and then it goes back down and end the ride. Uh, the transition between those two is done automatically. I'll show you that in a moment with a different ride. Um, and same thing for the transition after this into the stopping and uh, uh, you know stopping position when people can embark and disembark. Um, you cannot control these transitions. You can only control what you put in between. So if I wanted, I could have it go up, down, up, down a few times, things like that. And then you have the trigger sequence. So, these are your ride sequence that you can put trigger sequence in them. Um, I wanted this to, the whole thing to play as the ride was getting up and touches this spot. But I realized that there's a transition, like I was saying, and there's actually a moment between the transition and when the sequence officially starts so what I did instead I put it on the first one with a delay of 32 seconds so that the timing would be just right and uh, when you do sequences on a small ride that's usually what you want to do you want to put it all in the in the first sequence it's just easier this way well to get the perfect timing that's in my opinion, you know, you do whatever you want. Uh, but yeah, the result would be this. 
So let's uh, just fast forward here. The right goes up. Okay, back to normal speed. I also added a light, by the way. In that, uh, in the right sequence, I also added a light. And touching. See, and now the animation plays. This lights up everything. Blah blah blah. So that's how you do it. And then this plays for 16 seconds because, and then it stops. See, it's not perfect timing, but it's good enough to me. So that's uh, that's the thing. Um, and yeah, the last thing that I want to show you is the right sequence. That's the last thing here. Uh, so every small ride actually has a sequence, but most of them is very simple. For example, if I take this, uh, your sequence is just main sequence. That's it, right? Uh, however, if I go in a good example would be this. That's a good example. If you go in this, for example, you have a bunch of stuff and you actually have even more choices. So you can play with that. And uh, if you test around, you'll notice that the animation is actually... Um, there's always... You know, this is your starting animation. Like this, there's a transition. That's what I'm. That's what I wanted to say. So this ride, the transit, the first transition is this, and every sequence that you'll see, uh, in, it transitions back into this position, and then, then you're starting to see the actual sequence. So as you play with this, you'll realize what are the transitions that are enforced on you. What are your possibilities uh, there's a lot of very interesting stuff to do with that once you're done with your ride sequence then you can do uh, your trigger sequence so that would be everything at this point I believe I covered everything I didn't show you know the example of animatronics but it's the same thing um, Mostly it just takes time to do. It's a lot of time and effort, uh, but it's very fun to do, very rewarding. And uh, one very interesting to take note of is that a trigger sequence actually helps the stats of a ride. If I was to remove the trigger sequence here, you would see the stats fall just a tiny bit. Um, so yeah, I hope this was useful to you and I hope you sort of enjoyed it. If not, don't forget to unsubscribe. And uh, if you did enjoy it, well, I'll see you next time.